Uh, not yet, no. Well, it depends on how you look at whether this is Purim stuff. But, um, well, I don't mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, so that's not why I'm in the first call. Yeah, so we'll, 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 uh, we'll see this. So first of all, before we start, uh, this uh, is my 200th Ramam share. Which is, uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's pretty good. And the irony, I feel like it's been that also, but it's, uh, it's uh, you know, for a week for, you know, you, you do the math and sometimes it was less than four a week, but uh, yeah. How many years have you been doing this? this is, well, I started at the beginning of last year. Oh, okay. so, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're doing a side topic, which is tangentially related to Purim, but not really. So I, I've been doing this year for the women on Fridays, uh, and the topic of that year is basically like, what is the perfection slash reward slash nature of durabanans of like keeping durabanans? Okay, oh, we did talk about the way earlier. So yeah, so I have a new approach to it. This is based on Russia Saran, which is like a really interesting Russia. So that led me into this question of um, when Chazal used the Midos Shator Nidreshes Pahen what are they doing? And we've danced around that question a lot, you know? So I, earlier this year, I started reading this book called Maimonides, Life and Thought by Moshe Halbertal. I, I think it's fair to say that this was recommended by Rabbi Ginsburg, but not to me because my Chavrusa, David Rindy, recommended it to me and he read it in Rabbi Ginsburg's house. David Rindy was your Yeah. Well, he is now. I, I got him first for for six years, seven years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been learning with him since 2005, so that's a long time. Um, uh, back when I was just a little baby. Uh, no. uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so the book is, is, is endorsed. And so it, this is a, it starts with a biography, but it's kind of like an overview of what made the Rama unique in terms of his shitos. And he has a section here uh, on, I think this is actually originally written in Hebrew, uh, but there's a section in here on um, uh, on the Ramam's view of rabbinic authority. And in fact, if, do you want to follow along with this? Because I have this extra copy. Yeah, here you go. Okay, so what we're going to do is like, here's the game plan, okay? We're going to read his analysis, but every source that he quotes, we're going to look, uh, we're going to look up inside and learn in the wrong. So we can be trying to learn on our own and see whether his conclusions are warranted. Okay, but we're going to use them as good. Oh, you don't have to write down this book. I'll, I'll do it. Um, okay, so uh, I, I was debating where to start, uh, but let's just start at this on the place of revelation, which is at the bottom of page 111. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so he says like this. In order to be considered an innumerable commandment, meaning something that you count, uh, aside from the condition that the commandment must be an organizing command, there is another condition that the organizing command was given to Moshe at Sinai. Maimonides anchored this condition in his first two rules at the beginning of the, of the Book of Commandments, which deals with the question, what does it mean that something was given to Moshe at Sinai? Okay, so just background here. Ramam wrote the Sefer, he wanted to write the Mishnah Torah. Okay, but then he said there's a problem, which is that I want to write a book on all the mitzvahs, but people are not going to know I, people. I need to reassure people that I wrote on every mitzvah. So I'll list all the mitzvahs in the beginning. But the problem is that people will not agree with my list of what counts as part of the 613 mitzvahs because they got messed up by the Bahag. Bahag is the Bahalof is Godolos, who had a different safer and a different count of mitzvahs. And the Ramam said his, his, um, his views are like wildly inaccurate and strange and bad and and make the Torah into like a sealed book, you know. So the Ramam said decided to write a Sefer Mitzvos, and in the beginning of the Sefer Mitzvos, he wrote fourteen principles, which are called Shorashim, uh, where he says the rules for what you count as a mitzvah. Okay, so that's what he means. The first two of these rules. Okay, uh, these two rules sharpen another of the Book of Commandments contributions, articulating a theory of halacha and an understanding of its hermeneutics. Hermeneutics being like uh, principles of how to uh, derive it uh, and interpret it. The original positions espoused by Maimonides in these two rules garnered scrupulous, critical, and angry criticism in Nachmanides' glosses to the Book of Commandments, right? So the Ramban wrote Hasagos. He wrote critiques on the Ramam Sefer Mitzvos uh, throughout the book and also on the Ramam's rules, and they are very uh, vehement, you know, in, their, in the critiquing. Nachmanides' sharp and comprehensive objections gave rise to the most important medieval discussion of the philosophy of halacha and its hermeneutics. A study of these rules will round out the portrait of the halakhic philosophy that emerged in the commentary on the Mishnah. 
Okay, in the first principle, which we will read momentarily, Maimonides stated that he would not enumerate rabbinic commandments rooted in rabbinic decree and not Sinai in his count of the commandments. Maimonides would not have thought it necessary to defend this principle had not the Halakhas Gedolos, author of the Bahag, enumerated rabbinic commandments like the recitation of Halal, the lighting of Hanukkah candles, and the reading of the scroll of Esther. Okay, so, <laughs> yes, and that's why I'm saying it's tangentially related to Purim, or, or maybe not tangentially, our, our, our motive is tangentially related. And again, when we, we, we stumbled upon this organically last year when we were doing the Bahag, and we, we noted, I always, I've recorded this so many times, that the Bahag says uh, that there are nine mitzvahs for Hanukkah. There's lighting the Hanukkah candles, he counts that, and then each day of Halal he counts as a separate mitzvah, okay? Um, so Ramam says, like, oh, he says right here, I don't have to paraphrase him, quote, know that it would not have been necessary to comment on this because it is so obvious, right? Obviously, you don't count Durabanans, you know, in in the in Taryag. And in fact, where do we get Taryag from? Taryag mitzvahs nemru lamosha misinai. Right, so you think that if it's not from Sinai, then you don't count it, but the Bahag disagrees. Okay, Ramam goes on. He says, um, after all, the Talmud says six hundred thirteen. Let's see, I've internalized the Ramam so much, I didn't realize I was quoting him. <laughs> uh, after all, the Talmud says six hundred thirteen commandments were spoken to Moses at Sinai. How could we say that something of rabbinic origin would be part of this count? This claim seems obvious, but within Maimonides' justification of his methods lurks a sharp and complex line of reasoning. He claims that one should not enumerate rabbinically enacted commandments because they were not given at Sinai, as he states later about the obligation to light Hanukkah candles. In fact, let's read it on our own first, because I forgot he quotes from the Ramah so much here. So let's skip to the uh, the other packet, which if you want a copy, then I can get you a copy outside, Mati, or you can just look at the thing. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so this is Akal HaRishon. Uh, what was that? This is Kafa, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't count the mitzvahs that are midrabana. Da, you should know. This is what we just read. We didn't need to comment on this. We shouldn't need to comment on this because of its obviousness. Since the Talmud says, that 630 mitzvahs were said to Moshe at Sinai. Nomar, how can we say How can we say that it's included in the, in the, in the count of all? But we have to comment on it because they, the Bahag and his followers, erred by counting Ner Hanukkah and Mikra Megillah included in the mitzvah say. They also count the obligation to say 100 brachos every day, which we all hold, everyone holds that that's an obligation, but to count that as a do-risa is problematic. What, what would you say the problem is? Counting 100 brachos a day as a do-risa, why is that problematic? Oh, no, he's counting as one mitzvah, thankfully. That, that, that would be crazy, but yeah. Are you going to say Sturabonan? Like well, I mean, yeah, but why, what, what would compel the Roman to say Sturabonan? Brachos aren't derisa. Brachos except for one, which is <clears throat> because of Mazan, right? Arguably, you could say the Brachos of Shema. Well, and, yeah. I mean, just because, like, how do you know Brachos are derisa? Just because the frameworks we use. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm not saying what, the, what would the Ramam say. The Ramam would say that, that, that. The, <laughs> And then you could say there's, and, and, and then you could say the brachos is just the the, the specific words of Yeah, you could say that. You could say that. Um, Ramon does not say that, but yeah, you could say that. Um, what was it? Pask in that way. I mean, it's not going to be a matter of psak, but like, let's say for example, you could you know say that what's the what's the source for brachos nen in in the Gemara? Anyone know? Svara. Oh. Right, so you could say that the that people were saying brachos before the rabbanon came along and created the text, mm. you know, and, and and made you obligated in it, and that this is a mitzvah do raisa that just didn't have the specific form. You know, it will be hard to say that there's a hundred, but whatever. You know, you you could say something like that. That's what you that would suggest. I mean, right? I mean, yeah, just uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like right, you you could say that, and I don't know if this is one where the rabban disagrees. Okay, okay, so so um comforting the mourners, visiting the sick, burying the dead. Okay, uh, you know where the Rambam counts these under? Where does he codify them? Uh, I'll say again. Uh, in uh no, no, that's a good guess though. 
I think that this has been done this numerous times. Oh yeah. I ask the same question every time we do it. Yeah, so that's the, I'm glad we're reviewing that because during the dead. During the dead, visiting the sick, um uh comforting mourners. Where in the Mishnah Yeah, we're in the Mishnah Torah. Isn't that in um Yes. So it's in uh, Sefer Shoftim. Shoftim. Yep, in Hilchos Avel. Okay, in the Laws of Mourning. Ah, nice. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. Um, I didn't know we had a Ramam in here. All right. Yeah, I see. Uh, uh, in I think Yogim or Yodalid. No, Yodalid. He says Mitzvah um, say shall Debraham. It's a Mitzvah say Midrabanan. This is in fourteen one. Lavakir uh, Cholim to visit the sick, Lanachim Avelim to comfort mourners, Lahoti Ames and to escort the dead, Lahafni Sakala and to to uh, accompany the Kala, Lulvos Haorachim and to uh, to uh, escort the guests, Velasa the Bechol Tzarchei Akbura Laseis Al Kasef to be involved in all the needs of burial, to carry the beer, not B E E R B I E R. Uh, I feel like I made that joke recently. Velelech <laughs> Lafanov and to to walk before it. The beer is the the funeral bed. Um, Velispod and to give a hesped, a eulogy of Lachpor and to dig of Lickpor and to, and to uh, bury, and to make the Chasan Kala rejoice, Velisod, and to provide them with other meal needs. These are what we call Gimilus Chasadim that have no. Um, no measure, right? That there's a, there, this, it's not prescribed, uh, and it's interesting. He he goes close to what you said. Even though all these mitzvahs are durbanan, not but they're included in the Everything that you would want your friends. To, uh, that you would want others to do for you, you should do for your brother in Torah and Mitzvahs. So the Ram says these are all Durbanan. Um, the Baha counts it as Doraisa. And then also, this is to me, this is another like wacky one. And I'm only using wacky, like, look, I'm not calling the Baha wacky. I'm just call, saying that the Ramam calls the Baha wacky. <laughs> Nihu, uh, sorry, um, Halbashas Arumim. Where, what's, what do you think his source is for clothing the naked? So you can definitely bring up stuff. Like in yeah, you can definitely bring something in, but if he wants to do in the in the Torah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Adam and Chava. When God provides clothing for Adam and Chava, Bahag learns from there. It's a mitzvah to say me to Orisa to clothe the naked. I might also remember. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a wild thing. The chish of tekufos and calculating the um, astronomical uh, cycles and stuff, which which Ram holds that's necessary. But it's necessary in order to do the mitzvah of Kiddush HaChodesh, of, of setting up the, um, or sorry, of, uh, yeah, being Mikdash HaChodesh. Ushmon Asar Yom Ligmor Behenas HaHala. He counts all 18 days to say, say Hala. Okay. He's born in his pale. Contemplate and be astonished. Okay. Al Misha Shomei Lashonam. At anyone who could hear Chazal's language, Ne'emru Lo Lemosha the Sinai. They were said to Moshe Sinai. Umone Kriyas HaHalal. And they would count the reading of Halal. Asher bo shibach David shavach David lifnei Hashem yisale. You're going to say the same thing I know, which is a good argument that David um, praised before Hashem. Shemosha needs tavinu bo that uh, to say that Moshe was you know commanded in it. Okay, you're going to say yeah, say Hallel. You so and look, even the Ramam can make this argument. Okay, well let me say what Yosef because I say <laughs> that um, that the mitzvah of Hallel could be Raisa, but we only employ David's uh, words and, and formalize the obligation after David and Melch wrote the Tehillim, you know? And in fact, there's an argument to say that the Ramam holds that there is a Halal Del Raisa, which we did last year, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the Ramam hold Halal Del Raisa? Or when? Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the Rabbanan, so the Ramam is not going to hold it. It's Del Raisa. Well, what was that? Well, Leil Pesach, right? So the night of Pesach, yeah. the Ramam holds that there's a Halal as part of your Chiv of Sipor, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Can it still be the race on Hanukkah? Given the event of Hanukkah, it's the race. So. Yeah, you could say that. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. But it would not be its own separate thing. Yeah, he wouldn't count it as its own separate thing, but you could say that there's Kim the Rice in it. Yeah. I don't think there would be a year in the Kim No, it wouldn't be, right. There would only be a year in the Kim the Rice. Right, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good question of. Um, yeah, I haven't looked into that I mean, question. I don't remember. I don't know how that and it's something that you can make like a well, you do a bracha for a miracle that happens to you on a personal level. Definitely. Yeah, every year. 
Mm-hmm. I think so. That rings a bell. It does ring a bell, right? But that's different than halal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think there's also, you know, there's Chazal that say that the, uh, you know, that the Shiraz Hayam, you know, was was halal, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. This next one's harder, though, or this is a better argument, in my opinion. Um, uh, umanu nerchan, no. Uh, oh, umone nerchanaka shakabu oso chachamim babayis sheni. Right. So how can you say that? How can you count? <laughs> yeah. How can you count Ner Hanukkah, which was established by the Chachamim during Bayashani? Uh, how can you say that that was said to Moshe at Sinai? V'chein Mikra Megillah, and same thing reading in the Megillah, right? Where the, the existence of the thing is, uh, you know, only came into existence after uh, after the events. The Eni Saber Shiyadame Mishu Hu O Shiyala Al Libo Shenemar Le Moshe B'Sinai Shiyitzave Osano Shim B'Sof Machu Senu Yerolano Im Hayavanim Kach Lekach Shnis Chayav Lahalik Ner Chanaka. This is such a, a dripping with sarcasm comment here, saying, I don't think anyone would imagine or entertain the thought that it was told to Moshe at Sinai that he should command us that if at the end of our Malchus then such and such happens to us with the Greeks, then we should light an air Hanukkah, <laughs> right? That, would, that same was not said to Moshe Sinai. Va'asher, nearly, so what it seems to me is, ki ma shehichshilam bazeh, so what caused the Baha'i to stumble in this? Hu she'anu mavarachim al divarim elu, asher ki deshanu b'mitzosav, v'tzivanu al megillah. Ulahalik ner, v'ligmor ashalo. Okay, so so he says what misled people is the fact that we make a birkas and mitzvah, and in the birkas mitzvah we say, "Blessed are you, Hashem, God, King of the Universe, who commanded us, right? Asher kidesham mitzvah v'tzivanu and commanded us." That's what he says. I, I don't think that that's what the mishal was. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Right. 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 What I would have thought, uh, and what I, what Moshe Halbertal uh, says, uh, you don't need to look up. I, I, this is either in what we're going to read, or this is what he says earlier. Is the um, there are statements uh, that say? In fact, actually, I will, I will read this uh, statement. I think he does say it before. There are people who hold that. Um, that everything was given to Moshe at Sinai, including every mach locus that ever would arise and every chiddush that would ever be made, right? Um, okay, I can't, I can't find where he quotes it. Uh, but so I would say that that would, that, like, if you hold that that's the case, I don't know how people hold that, but if you hold that that's the case, then you could say that it was given at Sinai, you know? That every mach locus and every chiddush that was ever, that any chacham would come up with was given at, to Moshe at Sinai. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to point in, I just seem like Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, right. And well, I mean, that's why he counts every Durbanan, right? Every Mitzvah Durbanan. Are you all in the Durbanan? Are you not more in the Durbanan count? I think he, I think the Baha counts every Mitzvah Durbanan. There actually are not a lot of Mitzvah Durbanan. Right? You could probably count them on like three hands. Yeah. Or, no, or, or, or five, if you count every day of halal. Oh, no. yeah. you mean isn't as they, opposed to halachas or I, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so like institutions on their Rese, own. Yeah. So things are institutions right. on their own as opposed to things which are just like gazeras around. Exactly, those. yeah. All right. So, like you would have, let's say you have the ones he mentioned, you'd have Tisha B'Av, Natil Sidayan, or really probably the other fast days also, you know, um, Eruv. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you know, so, and then. Um, <laughs> Is it, wait, no, why, why, why would, why would the Yeah, we do make, we make Rava. Yeah. yeah. It's not an obligatory mitzvah. You don't have to make an Eruv, but when you do, it is a mitzvah, though. Yeah. I just try to use it. I just think that's a zero but we're not Uh, no. Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> Right. 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 Yeah. So I I I don't think there are a ton of missiles there missiles to say You know, it's not um, like you're populating the list a lot. Oh right, Lulav Kol Shiva, then yeah. then that, that's another example, right? Um uh the things in the um in this, uh, it's a good question. I I, I don't know. Uh, also in the Seder, right? Arbakoso, Seseva, right. even though we don't make brachas on them, then they are mitzvahs to say, uh, you know, Mar Bazmanazeh. Right, Herozes, uh, whether that's a mitzvah or not. Yeah, so th- there are some, but there's not like there's not like 
hundreds, you know. I guess the question would mean that the hat counts as a single one. Right, or just the ones, right, or just the ones that you have a bracha on, right? Right. That would be the test. You're saying that it'd be weak to think that the Baha made his mistake because of this. It doesn't count as yeah. Right, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. All right. Um then he says, Vim Amnam. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh so the Talmud itself asks, where were we commanded? And they say, from the Pasuk, don't deviate from what they tell you left or right. Okay, so, so that, that is Del Raisa, right? That, and that's how you can say that God commanded us in the in the Rabbanan, not because God said on Sinai, light Hanukkah candles at the end of Malchus Yavan, but because he said, don't deviate from whatever Chazal tell you to do, and Chazal is the one to institute this. Vim Amnam Mishum Kach Manu, and if it's because of this that they counted it, Hari Roy Shimanu Kol Davar Shumi Durbanan. Okay, so he's saying, then they should count everything that's Durbanan. Kevin Shakulma Shetzivu Chachamim Lasos, Bukholma Shehiz Hiru Mimenu, Kvar Nitztave Moshe Rabbeinu Besinai, Shehitzave Osana Lakaimo. Because everything that Chazal, that the Chachamim commanded us to do, and everything that they prohibited us from doing, was, in this sense, commanded to Moshe at Sinai, uh, who commanded us to fulfill it. Uh, that's the essay, is that according to the Torah that they teach you, and according to the judgment that they say to you, you shall do. And they prohibit us from transgressing their words. In anything that they uh, enacted, or they or taught. And when they said, don't deviate from whatever they tell you. If you're going to count all Durabanans in the Taryag because they are included in Lotasur, and in the essay, so he's kind of making this kind of argument, right, Chaim? Mm-hmm. He's saying that, that um, either count all of them or count none of them. Right. right. Um, I still think there's room to make the argument you were saying about like, you know, which ones do we make a bricks of mitzvah on? But uh Ram saying it's all or nothing deal. Like why specify these? Right. Just as they count Ner Hanukkah Mikra Megilla, Kakhayu Monim, the TLC Dayim, the Eruvin, Shari Anu Mavarkim, Ashek Shana Bimitsavit on the TLC Dayim, Al Mitzvah's Eruv, Kamosh Anu Mavarkim, Al Mikra Megilla, the Lag Ner Hanukkah, Balkol Midr Banan. Okay, so so far that is everything that that I think they do count. Or actually, maybe they don't even count that. Maybe that's why he's asking this. <laughs> okay, that's okay, fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, just, just while we're talking about this, I do have to show you the tool that we can use to find these things. And let's just, let's just look up Arab while we're here. So on Al Torah, if you go under tools and you go under Magar HaMitzvos, we, we used this last year a couple of times, and you look at the, let's just for kicks go uh, all of them, um, and you display... So let's look up. So if you look, for example, Ner Hanukkah, right? So you'll see for Ner Hanukkah, the Bahag counts it as a say number 140. The Sefer Yerim counts it. You, you, you don't need to write this down. This is, uh, the Sefer Yerim counts it as um, Simon. I, I don't know this the organization, Sefer Yerim. Ramam, Ramban, Smog don't count them. And the Smog has a place where it looks at it, and the Sefer Chinuch, who goes like the Ramam, doesn't count it. But now let's look up Eruv. No, so no one counts Eruv. And the TLS Yudayim. Yeah, I don't remember. No, I'm not having interesting defense. Yeah, the smock does count it. Yeah, right. Uh, but then if you look up, for example, Nichum Avelim. All right, let's see. Nichum no, Avelim. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. I'm not having that. Lise Avalok Lenachem of Elin. Yeah, the Bahag and the Ram counted. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. The Ramam's um, um, uh, question is you're being inconsistent, right? Right. Meaning, given the fact that they make this mistake, why is the Ramam saying that that's their Mikshal? If anything, he should say, right, right. He should say they had some other reason for counting it. And then now this is a, a, a possibly a Kusha on their position, right. but not. You know, not the mix, not the thing that caused them to make the mistake. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, okay. Going on. Uh, amru maim rishonim mitzvah. Okay. Even more so. so. This is a good kasha. The Gemara explicitly says maim rishonim is a mitzvah. Okay, that's what we call nitiyasi time. My mitzvah amar abaye mitzvah lishmo divrei chachamim. 
<laughs> okay, what's the mitzvah? It's a mitzvah to listen to the Chachamim. Kamosh uh, Amru B'mikra Megillah V'nir Chanukah Hechan Tivanu Milo Tasur. Just like they said about where, what's the source of uh, of God commanding us in Mikra Megillah and Nir Chanukah? It's from the Los Ase of Lotasur. Ukvar Nisbar Shekolma Shetiknu HaNevi'im Alei Mashalom Shamdu Achrei Moshe Rabbeinu Hu Gamkein Midor Abanan. It's also clear that everything that the Nevi'im enacted uh, after Moshe Rabbeinu is also Midor Abanan. Uvafirish Amru B'Shash Shetiknu Shlomo Erevin V'Yadayim Yatas Abbas Kol V'Am when Shlomo was uh, uh, set, uh, you know, enacted the mitzvah of Ervin and Yadayim, uh, then Abbasco went out and said, "My son, if you are wise, if you have, if you you have made your heart wise, then I my heart will rejoice also." So you see from here that all those mitzvahs that were enacted after Moshe are called Dirbanan by Chazal. So how can anyone call them Deraisa? Uh, mm-hmm. And I explain this to you. Uh, so there's a special Havmin by, by Mikra Megillah. You wouldn't have this by all of them, but he's saying, I'm, I'm telling you this so you don't erroneously think that Mikra Megillah, because it was set up by Nevi'im, is considered Deraisa. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Shlomo, right, yeah, mm-hmm. correct, mm-hmm. right. Um, Shehare, or let's say from, are there any other Mrs. Durabana that were established well, we by say, Well, whether well, we could say the fast. Although, uh, the question is, although maybe you could say they're not mitzvahs because they were mm-hmm. true. Well, the, Zaharia mm-hmm. mentions the fast, right? But well, the question is, could, are they mitzvahs? Uh, I mean, they were shoes, except for Tishma. It's, it's a good question, right? Do we is, count them as mitzvahs? Tishma for shoes? No, I mean, no. no. Right, so I guess Tishma. Right, yeah, it's a good question. Shahari Eruvin Midurabanan Alpha P Shahim Tikun Shlomo Ben David Ubestino. Yeah, right. So so he here if, if you ever need a mitzvah by the oh, sorry, if you ever need a raya, by the way, that Shlomo was not a Navi according to the Ramam, it's a good raya, right? right what? What? If you need a raya that Shlomo Melk was not a Navi what? from the Rambam, what? then this is a raya because he's saying uh-huh. oh, is it the opposite? The Alpha P Shahim Tikun Sh- No, wait. Isn't it? Is, is, <laughs> wait, hold on. The Arti Lha Zos today shall low talk show Shimikra Megillah came and showed me Tikun Nevim Nakshab Midrasa. Char Ervi Midrabana and Alpha P Shahim Tikun Shlomo Ben David. Who based Dino? I mean, the same Shlomo was a Navi. The Shlomo was a Navi, and his Tikana is not the Arisa. Yeah, so uh-huh. too for the uh, so too for any other to come. That's is that you know, what he's saying, or he's saying that so. that uh-huh, you uh-huh. shouldn't air about Mikra Megillah? Yeah, exactly. Mikra Megillah, what exactly you think is Mikra Megillah was made by uh-huh. Navi, therefore it's the Arisa. But saying, no, it can't be the case because, Shlo- because Arab was made by Shlomo, who's Navi, therefore, mm-hmm. and oh, it's the Arisa. okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, Sorry, I, 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 I,
that that counts as a separate mitzvah and mm-hmm. that when you put someone on a horse, it counts as a separate mitzvah. So, so too, yeah, Yeshayahu mentioned clothing the naked, but that's just a particular within the mitzvah of tzedakah. Right. It's as if the lashon of the Talmud was joined to those who are have speech impediments and speak a different language. What does that mean? Where's Kafa say on that? 80? Okay, so he's quoting a, 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 a prophetic idiom. The Ilmalikin lo manu mikra megillah b'chadoma lo vein mitos shenem lo lemoshe b'sinai. Were not for the fact that uh, uh, that that was the case, then they wouldn't have counted uh, mikra and megillah in something that was a uh, mitzvah that was said to Moshe at Sinai. Loshen gemara shavuos only ela mitzvos shnitz tavu al har Sinai. Shasidin li schadish kolgon mikra megillah minayin minayin. So the gemara in shavuos says, I. This is the same regardless of the following thing else. Megillah still doesn't count. And yeah. Even if you count it, that's if you really count. Right. Right. Uh only Ella Mitzvah Tab R Sinai. So yeah, in other words, he's, that's what he's arguing now. He's saying that because there's a Gemara Shavuos that says, I only have mitzvahs that are commanded at Sinai. Shahidim Lihishadish. What about the ones that are going to come up in the future? Go Nikra Megillah, which means that even the Gemara is saying Mikra Megillah was not said at Sinai. Right. Um, Talmulomar Kimu Vikivlo. So the Pasuk in Megillah's Esther says they, they fulfilled and accept they established and accepted. Kimu Masha Kiblu Kavar. They they established what they already accepted. Namely, they accepted upon themselves every mitzvah that the Navim and the Khamim would command in the future. I am astounded that they counted the mitzvahs to say midrabanan as we mentioned. Why not the losases? So apparently the bahag doesn't count a single losase. Okay, midrabanan. Uh, Esrim, um, uh, Esrim so there are Shneos La Rios, right? Secondary Rios, which are only Asr Midivre Sofrim. He should count 20 of those. Yeah. Does the hog count any Lotases? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 He just not Lotases or Bonan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's saying you should count the 20 uh, uh, Shneos La Rios. Just as every erva midoraisa is a lotase deraisa, kach kol shnia ushnia lotase derabanan. Every secondary one should be a, a, a derabanan. Or you know what I would say, just to be done with Haskus, at least count all of them as one derabanan. <laughs> you know, like shnios la rayos. You know, all right. Kamosh biruv amru shnios midivre sofrim. No, I'm not saying I mean, you could count. Um, so, so well outside of I think. Oh, okay. Never mind. That point is near Rios. If you find Rios, right? Yeah. So, if you have a lot of I think it would be more. I think it's 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 more. Yeah. Oh, and whatever derisa it is from. Yeah. So the question is. Right. So, so, so the question is. So and, and you're saying and and, and that would not apply to the essays. Right. 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 So the question is, is, and I don't know if there's like this bishop, that's Durban, no, 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 based in nothing. Well, isn't that uh, for Lotus Cotton? Yeah. Lotus Cotton bomb? Right. Right. To to not marry. Right. Yeah. So the question is, but the the question that you're implicitly raising is, are there any Los Tases Durban that aren't attached to the rise? It's going to be hard to find one, right? I can't think of any of them. Yeah, right. That's a good argument. Right. That's a good argument. Okay, no, it's a good argument, though. 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 Okay, no, it's a good argument, So similar thing there, right? So they call it a mitzvah, but they say, what is the mitzvah? It's to listen to divrei chachamim. Mekach hayel hem liminos pesoch haklal, achos chalutza, Shahimi Divrei Sofrim. I don't know what the halach of Achos Chalutza is. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. I'll tie your shoes. Is a, is a oh, I thought you were saying that that's what Achos is. Yeah, yeah. How to tie your shoes? That's an extension of tefillin. That's an extension of tefillin? Yeah, isn't that the source of it? I, I have no idea. Yeah, that we're not into yeah I think so. All right, Klaus Adara. Now I get to the end finally. Um, wait, yeah. I think like, what are the things you what, what are they? Yeah. Like, so the only one I know is. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I, I should look it up. Let's see. Uh, so safe here. Uh -huh. so, what uh, uh, Muxa would definitely be a um, uh, extension uh, of Shabbos. I mean, what? here's an example. Wait, does he does he not list these all in one place? Um, well, he said. I mean, this is an example. Echad achiv me aviv o achiv me imo ben minisuin ben misnus. This is safer. Um, uh, this is Hilchos Yisrael Bia two three. Oh, sorry, two two. Um, echad. Uh, Okay, this is talking about the wife of your brother. Uh, no, no. Fika chaba imos har yishes aviv chayv shaim bin b'chay aviv bin b'chamiza chayv shaim achas mishum imo v'achas mishum yishes aviv echad achiv me aviv o achiv me imo. Whether your father's brother or your mother's brother, bin minisuin bin biznus, whether from marriage or from a uh, uh, promiscuity, ishto erva alav his wife. Is no, Asr, so this is your 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 aunt, your right? Aunt yeah. Of Aishas Achi Aviv Min Ha'im, but the wife of your father's maternal brother, Harihi Shnia Kamosha Biarno, is uh is is one of the secondary ones. What? Okay, I I I I don't know all of the oh, hey, no, yeah, no, let's no, not get no. into this. Yeah. Um okay, Klaw Shadavar, the son of the matter. If we were to count every Asay Durabana and every Los Asay Durabana, Hai Hadavar Magila Alafim Rabin, we would reach many thousands. Zedavar Barosh Ainbo Nistar Klaw. And this is something that is, there's no uh, no hidden ideas here at all, no, nothing hidden about it at all. Who, namely Shakol, Shihumi Durabana, Eno Naksha, Bichal Sheshme Os, Shloshis Rimitos. Any Midurabana is not included in Taryag. Lafi, uh, sorry, Shasikum Hazeb, because this sum, Kulam Psuke Torah, they're all Psukim in the Torah, the Imbahem Kulmi Durabana, none of them have a any Durabana, Kamoshi Nidavar, as we'll explain. Vizeshim Monim Mixas Hadavarim, Shemi Durabana, Umanichim Mixasam, Lafi Bechirasam, and the fact that these guys who do count it choose some and leave others based on their choice, who Davarsh Yashar Lakabu Bushimpan, we can't accept it at all. Amru Mishi Amru, no matter who says it. Uh, and we've established it to the point where no one can have any doubt about it. So, that's, so, so say you, Rambam. Wait till the Rambam comes along. Yeah. Okay. So let, well, uh, okay. So let's let's do this. Let's do a uh, compromise. Let's read Halbertal's summary of the, the part of the Rambam, and then we'll see if we want to go into it. Because I do want to keep our eye on the ball here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and I want to keep my involved for a selfish purpose also, which is I have to give a share on this on Friday. Okay. Um, this claim seems obvious, okay, but uh, within Maimonides' justification of his methods lurks a sharp and complex line of reasoning. If you want this back, you can have it back. Um, he claims that one should not enumerate uh, rabbinically enacted commandments because they are, were not given in Sinai, as he states about the obligation to light Hanukkah candles. Um, okay, I do not believe... Uh, that one would, uh, someone would imagine or entertain the thought that it was stated at Sinai that if after many years of our kingdom such and such happens against the Greeks, we would be obligated to light Hanukkah candles. End quote. According to Maimonides, the distinction between commandments from the Torah and rabbinic obligations is not merely legal, rather it delineates the content and limits of revelation. Now, this is an interesting way to frame it here, okay? So, and this is the argument he's going to make, I'm just going to foreshadow it, that according to the Rambam, in the whole Rambam's whole system of halacha, it is very, very, very clear what's from God and what is not from God, okay? In other Chachamim's systems, it is far less clear, okay? Like if you're gonna be able to say that that other things that were invented by the Rabbanan are included in Nemru Lamosha Basinai, that line is gonna be much blurrier, 
Okay, so he's going he's gonna to elaborate. The distinction between biblical and rabbinic, the Orisa and the Rabbanon, establishes that all halakhic norms not from the Torah were not given at Sinai. Maimonides reinforces a position by arguing that nobody would claim that the Israelites were commanded at Sinai to establish a future holiday during the time of the Greeks and the Hasmoneans. Yet, despite his confident tone, <laughs> which we saw, uh, that his claim has no objection, Maimonides is attempting to conceal a deep current in Talmudic literature and history of halakha, the claim that the entire corpus of halakha was given at the Sinai revelation. That's what I was referencing before, that there are sources that indicate this. Indeed, day-to-day -day halakhic practice comprises mainly rabbinic obligations, and thus the continuing impulse to connect these practices directly to God's word at Sinai is natural and understandable, Fulfillment of halakha was seen as worshiping God by realizing his, his will, and if this will is the product of hundreds of human rulings with no, direct connection to the with no direct connection to the revelation, what have the rabbis accomplished with all of their enactments? So I think this is a point that we in yeshiva uh, don't really appreciate, which is we're totally fine with the rabbanans, you know, and totally fine with the fact that God commanded us to follow the rabbanan. But if, if the masses found out exactly what percentage of their halakhic experience is the Rabbanan, and you align that with the attitude that people have towards rabbis now, you know, like that's a, that, that's going to lead to some pretty... They, they know it intellectually, but well, so I'll show you, this is what I, um, I forgot if I've shown you this before. I've shown, I've shown you a map of Shabbos. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I no, definitely have. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I haven't shown. I don't think I've shown it this year, though. So Yosef hasn't, hasn't seen it. Um, I, I definitely get the concept. Like, a, there are times where, due to college rules, where I'm holding only the dough rice. Doesn't it? The like I said, like I, there were times where, as I say, there's only times where I'm only holding the dough rice. It just doesn't feel like shops. Like I don't like computer just. Doesn't feel like Shabbos, right? So, so I, 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 um, I, I've told this before, but in case someone's just like you know listening to this particular shear, I'll do it again. Um, that uh, when in the olden days, uh, then the Pesach I got, we used to go to Hawaii every uh, every summer to visit my grandparent, my my grandparents, and so the Pesach I initially received was that because there's a suffix about which day is Shabbos, then uh, I would have to keep all the rices from Thursday night till Friday night, and then keep full Shabbos from Friday night to Saturday night. So I had to learn what was the rice and what was the Rabbanan. And I had to like, I got to experience what a Shabbos is like only to Arisa, right? So whenever I'm teaching this in high school and I'm going over Hilva Shabbos, I ask my students, well, what is the Arisa in Shabbos? And I ask them, I say, I give them, I say, there's a hint. There's four the Arisas that comprise Shabbos, right? So what are they? According to the wrong, I'm, you know, obviously. Tell us stuff like that. Uh, those, are not all, those are not all individual taryogs. I'm saying there's four mitzvahs in taryog. Is that farming related? Okay, Zachar is Yom Shabbos Kacha. That's what we call Kiddush. <laughs> there's the obvious one. Don't do Malacha. Right, and then what you you're saying the other one rest shop. rest is right is lishbos right so the three that people know so there's the Isra malacha there is shvisa right is rest on shabbos uh, then there's mitzvah kiddush and then there's one more no that's part of the definition of what malacha is that's the rabbanon um, nope that's the rabbanon. Nope, that's just good. Yeah. Nope. I'll give you a hint. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Is, is, is there tchum, right? There's an error for tchum also, but you can't travel outside the city limits. Okay, so these are the only dough rices, right? So then you have um, under, so in my color code here, I put red is Durabundant and green is Naveen, which is also Durabundant, but there's a Kiyom Dil Raisa in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not according to the Rama. I mean, it's a separate Malacha, but it's not a separate Dil Raisa, uh, a separate Taryag. Uh, yeah. So Shavus, which splits into um, doing things that resemble Malacha, doing things that lead to Malacha, and then asking a to do Malacha for you. Uh, Mukta and all of the different types of Mukta are Durabanan. Um, honoring Shabbos, having enjoyment on Shabbos, and then going about your needs. So those are all concepts in the Nevi'im, but they're expanded into actual halachos of lighting Shabbos candles, 
is part of a positive Kiyom and Kavod Shabbos. Uh, bathing in hot water on Erev Shabbos is also a, 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 a halacha de Rabbanan. Preparing your house on Erev Shabbos and getting it ready is de Rabbanan. Uh, wearing Shabbos clothing is de Rabbanan. Isser to have a meal uh, on Erev Shabbos is de Rabbanan. Under Oneg, um, having three meals is a Durbanan. Having Tashmish with your wife on Friday night is a Durbanan. Um, under Isser, preparing for the next day is Asr Mi Durbanan. Walking as you do on a weekday, like if you jump on Shabbos or like run on Shabbos, not for a mitzvah or not for enjoyment, then that's uh, Asr Mi Durbanan. Speaking about certain things in certain ways is Asr Mi Durbanan. Um, beginning a malacha on Erev Shabbos, certain malachas you're not allowed to begin on Erev Shabbos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that you mean these we're things, are, these things are all in the pasuk, but the the but the halakhic status is that they're, 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 they're rabbanan, according to the Raman at least. This is just going to the Raman, yeah. Um, Uvdin dechol, which who knows what that exactly encompasses. That's always a confusing one. Uh, weekday activities is 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 uh, is also midir rabbanan. Benefiting from a malacha that was done on Shabbos is also midir rabbanan. Um, making a kiddush on a kos is the rabbanan. Making a kiddush with a bracha is the rabbanan. So like. Lots of it is the Rabbanan. And experientially, I can tell you that when I was keeping the Justo Rises in Hawaii, like, you know, so many things, like, what basically couldn't I do? Well, I could carry anywhere I wanted because there's no Rushu Sarabim de Raisa, you know? Uh, not in Hawaii. Not, uh, not, not in Hawaii. Well, the, not the, the, depends on the, what stairs you're holding. Okay, fine. I'm just saying, according to, the, to uh, you know, uh, what do you call? Plain, plain, <laughs> plain, plain. Uh, uh, Amharat's assumptions. I mean, I, I, I'm into the Sukkia, but um, uh, um, what do you call? Um, writing. I could not write with my right hand, but I could do anything I want with my left hand. You know, mm-hmm. cooking. Like, you know, lots of forms of cooking are, you know, are, you know, things that we would consider cooking are not asrami daraisa. Turning on lights. You know. If it was an incandescent bulb, then like that was Doraisa, but like other types of light are not, you know, so I could like watch TV, you know, I could do other stuff. I thought at the time that money, that that uh, buying stuff was uh, uh, only Durabanan, but I saw someone say that the Ramban hold is Doraisa, which I don't know about. You know, um, <laughs> credit card not right. Yeah, credit card's fine. You know, I, I would think because I would think actually. I don't. Could be. It could be. Um, uh, you know, uh, I didn't have to wear Shabbos uh, clothing. Uh, I didn't daven. I uh, this is no Thursday to Friday was just the derises. Then Friday to to Saturday night was right, full Shabbos. You know, so it just it didn't feel like Shabbos. Right. The interesting that we don't have is my official fact that I'm not being lied to. Yeah, right. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. When you say we, you mean. No, I don't think that's Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I think it's just a weighty issue, you know. Um, so anyway, so this is just for Shabbos, right? But then, you know, again, you, 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 if Moshe Rabbeinu walked into a shul, he would have almost zero idea what's going on, right? Kriya Shema, he would recognize. <laughs> right but then everything else is all durabana you know almost all of our tefillah is durabana all of our brothers are durabana in kashrus so much of the stuff is durabana you know some is not even durabana right? yeah, yeah, yeah if you go with stuff that's not even durabana then, then that's a lot you know so like like i think if you if you had a pie chart of uh halakos that jews interact with uh, experientially and you saw how much of it was actually durabana it would be a lot more than people think. And if you take people's attitude, especially in this generation of towards like, and I'm not using this to degrade them. I'm quoting what other people say to degrade them. Dead white men are going to tell me what to do. Like, you know, or the patriarchy, you know, like people would be up in arms. Right. Um, but uh, so I, I think that that's what uh, Moshe Halbertal is saying here, which is, hold on. Let's just reread that in light of that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I, I, I've never had that Havamina, but I, so I, don't, I haven't looked into it, but I don't know. Um, so that's why he says that, uh, that indeed day-to-day halakhic practice comprises many rabbinic obligations and thus the continuing impulse to connect these practices directly yeah, to God's word. Oh, what? No. What do you say? Uh, it looks like your screen was frozen, which... Oh, no, I think it's just the background. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and thus the continuing impulse to connect these practices directly to God's word of Sinai is natural and understandable, right? If you can make all those Durabanans 
said by God, like, you know, and viewed that way, then that would be, you know, it, it would save us from this problem. Fulfillment of halakha was seen as worshiping God by realizing his will. And if this will is the product of hundreds of human rulings with no direct connection to the revelation, what have the rabbis accomplished with all of their enactments? According to the alternative approach, based on the claim that even the future insights of students were stated to Moshe at Sinai, that's what I was referring to earlier, the distinction between biblical and rabbinic does not set boundaries on the revelation, but merely takes internal legal differentiations. In other words, if the only difference between the Rabbana and the Arisa is not, did it come from God, but do you go Suffolk the Rabbana Lakula or Suffolk the Arisa Lakumra, like then it's a much more, you're keeping a religion essentially of revelation uh, in its particulars. The revelation includes itself includes the entire corpus of halakha from the Ten Commandments to the inferences and enactments of the rabbis. For this reason, an expression like, quote, 630 commandments were spoken to Moshe at Sinai, end quote, does not require a halakhas like the author of the halakhas gadolos to distinguish between biblical obligations and rabbinic decrees. One might say the, uh, that the opposite is the case. His basic impulse is to blur the differences between rabbinic enactments and biblical duties so as to include the entire halakhic corpus within the revelation. So this is his argument. Again, we don't I, I don't think we have all of the Bahag. Like, I think we actually like don't have all of the text. And the Bahag did not write his philosophy of halakha of what to count the way that the Ramam is. So we're left with our theories of what motivated the Bahag to try to do this or what was his overarching concern. So Ramam says he was misled by the text of the Bracha. You know, Halbertal says he wanted to include more in the revelation. Okay, so that's like his theory, all right? Maimonides' major move is to identify. Yeah. yeah, I think this one, though, seems to be much more uh, um, reasonable. It doesn't seem halakhical. That's the. That's the uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Maimonides' major move is to identify the content transmitted at Sinai with the biblical de Arisa legal category while distancing the larger layer of rabbinic law from the Sinai revelation. Maimonides knew that in order to isolate Moses' authority from the authority of the sages, he must challenge the long-standing Talmudic tradition of incorporating all layers of the halakha, including rabbinic enactments in the revelation. In order to marginalize this tradition, Maimonides further on in the first rule at the beginning of the Book of Commandments makes a brilliant move. According to Maimonides, rabbinic decrees are anchored in the revelation at Sinai through the mediation of, the, of a prohibition. Quote, you shall not deviate from what they tell you, end quote. Uh, this obligation, which is explicit in the Torah and mandates obedience to the rabbinical court, I love this next phrase, forms the narrow bridge that connects the mammoth Talmudic corpus to revelation, right? All the der rabbinians are hanging on that or the two derises of Alpia Torah and Los Asur. <laughs> yes, and so he's going to talk about what the Ramban says in a little while. I'm going to skip the Rambam's quote because we read it inside. He says, the specific contents of rabbinic decrees were not mentioned or even alluded to at Sinai. However, through the mediation of the duty to obey the sages, it can be said that even according to Maimonides, whatever the sages commanded was already given at Sinai. Later on in the first rule, Maimonides cites a single source that can be interpreted to mean that the entire corpus of halakha was given at Sinai. Maimonides reinterprets this source by means of the mediation of the prohibition against deviating from the sages as a second order commandment. So this is the statement about Miguel's Esther, right? Say again? I guess I say it. <laughs> Kimovia, yeah, this is the Kimo Kipo, yeah, right. That they, uh, that it says the, I'll, I'll read it in English here. The Talmud says in Tractate uh, this imp quote, this implies only commandments given at Mount Sinai. What is the source for including even commandments that will be invented in the future, such as the reading of the scroll of Esther? It is taught by the verse, they upheld and accepted. They upheld what they already accepted. That is, end quote, that is they accepted any future commandment that the prophets and sages would enact in the future. All right, back to Halbertal. It is possible to understand the Tavundic passage cited by Maimonides as saying that the ordinance of reading the scroll of Esther was also stated at Sinai, but only came to effect much later. In fact, that's the shot, right? Kimumasha Kiblu Kavar, that they fulfilled what they had accepted earlier, implies that they accepted Megillus Esther at Sinai, and then they only fulfilled it after the days. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Let's see if he brings it down. I, I can't remember. Maimonides rejects that notion, uh, the notion that revelation can prefigure a commandment relating to a future event, attaching his own interpretation to this Talmudic passage. Quote, they shall believe in any future, in any commandment that the prophets 
and sages would enact in the future, end quote. The duty to read the scroll of Esther was accepted at Sinai only in the sense that it is part of the general obligation of all Israel to obey whatever the prophets and sages would enact in the future, like signing a blank check. I also like that analogy. The principle of you shall not deviate as a mediating norm thus serves to anchor the authority of the sages halachic creativity. Similarly, Maimonides uses it to interpret Talmudic sources claiming that all of the principles and details of the halacha were given at Sinai. How much, when does this section end? Okay, um, all right, I'll read a little bit more. I gotta go at 2.30. Portraying the Sinai revelation as an all-embracing event, an attitude that Maimonides rejects, as we've seen, is but one expression of the trend to incorporate all halakhic life under the rubric of revelation. Another expression of this tendency, which also plays a major role in the history of halakh and Jewish thought, is to view the revelation as an ongoing event of which Sinai is just the beginning. Oh, this is a good transition into tomorrow. Revelation continues from Moshe to the prophets to the sages, who, if they do not prophesy, they at least possess an echo of prophecy through which halakha receives divine inspiration. This approach is also implicit in halakha's gadolos, which enumerates clothing the naked as a separate commandment based on the verse in Isaiah 58, 7, when you see the naked, you will clothe him. Maimonides attacks halakha gadolos for this as well, as he limits the revelatory authority, not only of the sages, but also of the prophets. According to him, only Moshe was given the authority to legislate by means of prophecy. The role of subsequent prophets is to preserve Moshe's Torah, not to create alternative, uh, an alternative or to add to the present Torah. So this is something also I've wondered about the Ramam. Ramam goes on at length, especially in the Hagdama to the Mishnah, to show how no Navi can be Mahadish anything, you know? And I always wonder if the Rama was engaging in a polemic, like did people before the Rama, were there people who thought that Navim could like innovate stuff, you know? And like, like it seems like that is relevant to Habertal's issue here, that people think that the, the, that, that the authority of regular Navim is closer to authority of Moshe than the way the Rama makes it out to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just a, a, a forecasting for uh, a teaser for tomorrow. So the Rambam um, then goes on. In fact, we might skip this part here because most of this is just a quote. Okay, so tomorrow the plan will be to learn what does the Rambam hold about stuff learned out from the Yirgamo Midos Shatora and the Adreshes Behen. And there he goes into the Machlo between the Rambam and the Ramban on what aspects of Chazal's Limudim do you count as Daraisa and what do you count as Darabana and then why? Yeah, yeah. It's I. I also had a mock. Uh, I had a chavrus in this once also. Yeah. I. I. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we want to go through the Ramban or not. Um. I definitely want to look at the Rambans that he quotes. Okay. okay. But to go through all of it, I think is a whole asec that I don't know if I'm up for right now. Okay. Let's stop here for today. Yeah.